Hello everyone, today we are going to see an interesting Azure Data Factory use case. Our use case is copy multiple files from one container to another container within a storage account using Azure Data Factory. We have to follow the below steps to implement this use case. The first step is we have to upload the files to the blob storage. The next step is we have to create linked service to link the data store to the data factory. The third step is to create a pipeline and import a get metadata activity and for each activity. The fourth step is inside the for each activity we have to import a copy data activity. The last step is to run the pipeline. These steps will make more sense when we do practical implementation. While doing the implementation, we will also see the definition of what is a linked service, how to create a pipeline, different activities like get metadata activity, for each loop activity, copy data activity. We will also see how to create data store for your source and your destination. I am sure this video will be very useful for everyone. Let's get into the implementation. Here is my Azure home page. My first step is to create two containers in my storage account and upload the source files. Inside my storage account, I'll create two containers, one for source and the other one for target. Source and the next container for the target. Inside my source container, I am going to upload my source files. Source container, I am going to upload the three files, weekly, hourly and daily sales into my source container. The files are uploaded. The next step is to log in to the data factory and create linked service to link my data store to the data factory. Let me do that. Inside the managed button, I'll be creating linked service. The linked service is used to link the data store to the data factory. It stores the connection string with the connection information needed for the service to connect to the external resources. Let me create the linked service. My data store is the blob storage and click continue. Let me name my linked service ls blob. Let me select the Azure subscription and my storage account. Let me create it. The linked service is now created. The next step is to create the pipeline and import the get metadata activity. Let me do that. I will click the author icon and create a new pipeline. I am going to name my pipeline as PL data. PL data. In my pipeline, I am going to import the get metadata activity get metadata activity. The get metadata activity is used to retrieve the metadata information of a data in Azure Data Factory. We can use the output of the get metadata activity in various conditional expressions to perform various validations. We can also use these metadata informations in subsequent activities. Let me go to the settings of the get metadata activity. Inside that, I am going to create a data set to point to the source data. Let me do that. My source is Azure Blob Storage and click continue. And my source files are in CSV format. I will click the delimited text and click continue. Here I have to mention the source data set name DS Source. I will be selecting the linked service ls blob. In the file path, I will be selecting the source directory. My source files 
are in the source container. Let me click OK and my import schema is none. And let me create the source data set. My source data set is now created. Now let me run the pipeline with only the get metadata activity. Let me validate my pipeline. I got an error saying that field list in the get metadata activity cannot be empty. Let's see what this error means. Let me close this window. Inside the get metadata activity, we have to mention the field list. There are a list of arguments regarding the metadata of our data. Let me expand the list of arguments. There are a list of arguments like child item, exist, item name, item type, etc. Here, our objective is to get the file name. So, we have to select the child items as our argument. Now, let me validate my pipeline. There is no error in my pipeline. Let me run my pipeline now by clicking the debug button. My pipeline is running. It got succeeded. If you see the output of my pipeline, here we are seeing the output in JSON format. Inside the child items, I have the list of all the file names. The file names are coming under the key names and the type is mentioned as file. Now the next step is to iterate over all these file names. In order to iterate over all the file names, we have to use the for each activity. Let me import the for each activity in my pipeline for each activity for each activity is going to iterate over the output of the get metadata activity so i'm going to connect the get metadata activity with the for each activity now inside my for each activity i'll go to the settings of for each activity here our files are dynamic today we can have one file and tomorrow we can have n number of files. So we have to provide that details as dynamic. Let me click add dynamic content. Here we have to select the get metadata activity child items because our for loop activity get the file names from get metadata activity child items which I was showing in the JSON. Let me click OK. Our configurations in the for each activity is completed. Now the next step is to use the copy data activity inside the for each activity because we have to iterate over one file at a time and copy the files from source container to the target container. Let's implement that. So inside my for each activity, I'm going to use the copy data activity. If you see here, we are inside the for each activity. For copy data activity, there are two settings that are mandatory. The mandatory settings are marked by the letter 1 in the settings. Now, let me go to the source settings. Here, we can select the same data set that we used in the get metadata activity. Because we are copying the same files that are used in the get metadata activity. This data set points to the folder where the files are placed. We have to specify the actual file. In order to do that, I'm selecting the wildcard file path. In our case, the file names are coming from the for each activity. Let me do that. I'll click the add dynamic content and select the for each activity. In the for each activity, I need only the names of the file. Let me click OK. We don't have any folder names inside our container, so we can have this as blank. Now, let me go to the sync. In the sync setting, we have to specify the sync data set. Let me create a sync data set. We don't have a sync data set, so 
let me create a new sync data set. Our sync data set is also Azure Blob Storage. Let me click continue and the file format is delimited text. We have to specify the name of our data set DS target. Next, I'm going to select the linked service and I'll click OK. Now, let me validate my pipeline. We got an error that container is required. Let's see what it is. In the target data set, we forgot to mention the destination location. Let me do that. Our destination location is the target folder. Now, let me go to the pipeline and validate the pipeline again. Our pipeline is validated and there is no errors. Let me click close and publish all my changes. All my changes are published. Now let me run the pipeline. My pipeline is running and if you see here, there are three copy data activities invoked because we have three different files. Let me refresh the page. The pipeline got succeeded. Now let me check if the files are transferred to the target container. Let me go to the target container. The files are successfully transferred. I hope you like this use case of transferring multiple files from one container to another. I am sure that you learned something new today. We will see yet another interesting use case in my next video. Until then, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.